Morning, this is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. You will notice a huge difference here this morning. There is a severe lack of garbage. Um, there's just this little bit of metal we have to strip out. Well, camper pieces with some metal mixed in we still have to strip out. There's the bathtub which I'm keeping. I don't know if I'm going to use that as a chicken pond or who knows what. I don't know, I'll figure that out. It's really pretty small for human use. I have a couple pieces of wood I'll probably use in building the chicken tractor later on. Almost all the demolition waste is gone. We just got this one piece yet we got to tackle. But the heat and humidity is really bad and my neighbor is also struggling in this so we're only working in the morning hours. We just bagged up all this garbage, cleaned up the area here a little bit, straightened up, and got that huge pile out of there. All gone. A lot of people said he wouldn't come, but there's proof. All gone. So he'll be back. I don't know when, because it's this is going to be some work, because that's where all the screws and stuff is. And neither one of us really feels like taking time to work a drill and a power drill and take all those screws out. I just don't feel like doing it the right way. So we're using an axe and a hammer and chipping and hacking at this. I'll show you something really cool. When I shot this camper with a 12 gauge, you can see the pellet holes came through the wall. So it penetrated the the two by twos. Well, it disintegrated the two by twos went through the wall here. Is that a piece of a pellet? There's a piece of a, a BB. It was a small game shot. It penetrated the the all the way through the camper, came through the plywood here, or the paneling I should say, and then it dented the metal siding on the outside, but not very much of it penetrated. But still, that's quite impressive to demolish literally absolutely disintegrate the 2x2 two two and the paneling inside it blew a hole straight through the side of the camper and go through another layer of paneling and indent the metal on the other side that's pretty impressive I think for a small game shot well that's it that's all that's left of the old camper a couple little pieces I figured you guys would be happy to see that. It's good news. Now, it's hot. It's really hot and humid. I've already been dehydrated this morning and had to rehydrate again. But I want to figure out how to turn this camper around, but the on the tongue there's no wheel on the on the jack right there. There's no wheel. So I don't have a way to really do this. Otherwise, well, I don't have a truck either, it's a mechanics, but otherwise. I would hook a chain on here and drag this out and then so that I can get my truck up in there and then back the thing out properly and then get it in here turn it around and maneuver it into position I want it out from the woods a little ways I'm gonna have to trim all these trees down I'll have to charge up my sawzall and get my chainsaw going but I want to trim all these bushes and shrubs and trees and everything that's hanging over so nothing is going to be rubbing on the roof of my home and this trailer is going to be turned 180, degree, 180 degrees with the tongue here and I want it out a little ways further so it's going to be about right here and that gives me then space behind so I can maintain it and keep it clean as well and of course keep it away from the woods the further away from the wood line the safer it's going to be from critters and the less mess it's going to be to clean up the leaves later the reason this got so cluttered is that was mosquito alley and spiders and everything it was a, it was terrible to go back here because the sun never got back there it was humid it was always damp and cooler and I tell you you go back there without bathing in bug spray and you won't come out alive. At least that was when the camper was up. 
and I want to avoid that this time. I want to allow airflow back in through here and have space to work if I ever want to go around behind there and walk around the, the house. So plus it's just going to look better to have a little bit more space. So actually I I got to get an excavator out here eventually. There's a bit of a slope right here downwards or I should say from here it goes upwards a bit. I'd like to level that off some and I'd like to dig a hole and put some gravel down but it's not in the I, I can't afford it right now so probably later after I've built my house I'll probably be moving this out putting down gravel scooping out an area putting down gravel and put it back in I also want to put down cement under the wheels but again that's not in the budget right now that's probably going to be done after I build the house because I everything's going into this right now so let me get going. I didn't hear anything here, so I didn't know, but look here. Isn't that cute? It's so little and fuzzy-headed. Actually, it's sort of ugly. <laughs> it's just sleeping. I think there was two of them. I think the camera can show me better than I can see. Two or three of them in there. Mom is having a fit. Mom is upset with me. Where's mom? There you are. Okay. I'm not gonna hurt your baby. Oops, focus. Camera doesn't know where I wanna focus. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Huh. A little bit upset with me. Oh, look at the little baby. I can't really get the camera in there. I can't see how many are in there. I'll be able to see better once I see this on the computer. What do we have? I guess you're going to see it at the same time as I do now. Looks like a bunch of them in there this time. Isn't that neat? Under the roof of my my wood stove shed. My herbs are doing well except for my rosemary. I wonder if I should have been watering that every day. The rosemary has died. It never grew and it died, which is a shame because they're expensive. Everything else is relatively cheap, but the rosemary is expensive. Uh, this stuff is looking good. I love this smell. Oh, it's so amazing. Look at this dill. This dill is huge. That's three and a half high, foot high right now. It's huge. All my other herbs are looking good. I think this one's going to need some water though. The basil is flowering. I'm going to let it start flowering and then as it's blooming I'm going to clip some of them so it spreads. You can see, wait, where was it? I clipped it. One of the heads. <laughs> Anyway, I have to keep it trimmed down so it'll spread out. And this guy isn't growing very much. I think I'm going to have to hit him with some diatomaceous earth. Something's been eating on him. Now the catnip. Catnip is really looking good. Catnip is loving it here. And I've been using that, actually. Baby Cat's been using that. I had her high. She was pretty well stoned the other day. I threw a leaf in there and she loved it. And it's mosquito repellent. I gotta start harvesting it now. This, if you trim it, it will also spread. And because it's been so hot and humid, I haven't been out here in the last couple days and the garden is growing over with weeds, so I've gotta get out here more. And look at here, the echinacea is flowering. My first flower, it's pretty cool. So I'm, I, now I have to look up what you're supposed to harvest on this for the tea. I'm sure somebody's going to tell me that now that I've done this video. But there's my first flower. Pretty cool. And that one will be opening up soon. As I showed a minute ago, that's pretty dense right there, growth. Something was, now that's odd. Something was laying in here. Do you see that bowl? 
something was laying in here last night. So something big enough to jump my fence. That's not good. Definitely something was laying in there. You can see it bowled out. Not good at all. Now, here is another mystery plant that's growing. It's going to be a squash of some kind. And it's growing well. I'm curious to see which one this is. This grew on its own, but it's different from them because the leaves are bigger. So, it'll be good to see what that is. And then I've got some amaranth growing here, which is an edible food. I'll let that grow. Here is some amaranth growing on its own, already growing seeds. I'll let that grow. Tomatoes are looking good. Tomatoes are really starting to grow now. A lot of flowers coming. There's another one. So although the garden is getting run overrun with weeds on me because I'm out working on a tiny home right now, the plants are starting to do well. And that's good news. Oh, look here, I got some more. I didn't see them the other day. Look at these guys. Very nice. Pretty soon I'm going to have some food. Now this almost looks like dill. I don't know what this is. It almost looks like dill. Oh, <laughs> funny. That's my asparagus. I just realized I see the stalk. That's my asparagus. Finally is growing. I put a uh, an asparag asparagus patch in here. <laughs> Isn't that funny? There it is. The asparagus grew. First year asparagus. Next year I'll have asparagus to eat. How cool is that? There it is. I couldn't figure out what that is because I've never seen asparagus its first time ever, first year growth. It's so spindly and thin. There's another one. There's two more. Nice. I didn't think it was growing. That came up pretty fast all, in, all of a sudden. That's cool. Well, I've got to get out here and stake these up. They're starting to fall over. Corn is growing. Sweet corn is growing well. So they say knee high by the 4th of July, and it, it is. It's knee high. So I got it in in time. At least for farmers, I got it in in time. It's up to my knees. That's what we say in Michigan. Knee high by the 4th of July for your sweet corn. And then you know it's growing and you got it in on time. There's these wild trees. They keep growing on their own. And the more I cut them down, the more they grow. Really fighting nature here a lot. It's really hard to fight this battle. So, once this hot streak is passed, I'm going to get out here and, and really attack this garden again. Fight back nature. It's a jungle. But it's... My garden is growing. The food is growing. That's good. Let's see how down over here... See, this cardboard is definitely going to help. Nothing's going to grow here. It's not pretty, but it sure does stop the weeds. Here I've got some zucchini. Nice, pretty zucchini plants growing. These are healthy. There's two of them there. So I'll be eating soon. Very soon. Once these start growing, boy, I'm going to be eating a lot. There's one. Actually, these are awesome in a stir fry. Oh, that's tempting to start picking some of these now. And Oh, they're nice tender young zucchini. Very nice. This reminds me, i got to put some diatomaceous earth around the bases of these and it'll stop the, the cutworms or whatever you call them that are eating them and cutting them off at the base. And I have to thin out some of these tomatoes so my cucumbers can grow. They should spread out. And I need to water them. The sun is really beating down on my food. But the garden's looking good. I'm happy. Here's an onion jungle. All my onions, actually, the grass is starting to move in. Gotta pull them out. Crabgrass. At least it pulls out easy. Everything comes out really easy.
every day I do a little bit of pulling and weeding every day a little bit not as much as I should be there's a nice see that's that's sad to pull this out that's plantain that's an edible plant and it, I really actually often I eat some of these weeds like this right here that's all edible mmm I love it sorrel oh that's good so I eat the weeds as I pull them out there's wild carrot yep that's carrot you can eat the whole thing and that's amaranth that's edible so this is all edible stuff I'm pulling out of here but I also eat onion leaves very good for you nice and sweet the tubes are very good very nice so I'm I'm always out here just foraging in my garden now every day all the onion tubes are nice and sweet really nice it's already 90 degrees the humidity is down to 60 percent woohoo uh, the fridge is running non-stop for three hours straight I'm pulling in between 30 to 60 amps on the solar charge controller just trying to top off the batteries power the fridge and everything else it is really harsh today on solar power and I'm trying attempting to cool this fridge because it's not well built unfortunately some people suggested insulating the fridge well you can't with this thing because the cooling coils are in the walls of the fridge on the outside edges so it's a stupid setup you have to have airflow on all sides of this fridge I don't like this design I don't like this fridge I would not recommend it this is not a good fridge it requires space on all sides um, if I had known that how bad it was how badly sealed it was where there's moisture collecting in the door right there and how the uh, the top and the front and the sides are losing cold air and of course with the hot coils on the outside edge of the fridge how could you possibly be cooling it very efficiently if there's heat all the way around it all the time it's just a stupid design nope don't reckon recommend this at all not this one so when I move into my tiny home I'm looking for a chest freezer which I will convert to run on solar power as a refrigerator to save energy because solar powered operations you do not want to run this type of fridge not at all it's not efficient it's uh I'm panting for air I'm a northerner you can see the humidity in the air do you see it I hope it shows up it's that grayness you can see the moisture in the air it's really humid there's a storm coming I can hear it it's all around me it's raining but it's not here so I probably won't be able to paint now if it's threatening like this I'll have to wait a little bit and see that's moving fast I think it actually cool it off I'm actually hoping it rains now Cool it off over here. Well, the thunder's getting closer and it's getting darker, and now I'm hoping it rains because uh, now we need it and it'll cool it off. It's 86 degrees and about 60% humidity. Uh, indoors is 84 degrees and 90% humidity. Not pleasant. Uh, the rain will make it nice. Can you see the gray? You can see the humidity. I think that shows up, on, at least it shows up in my view. You can see the moisture in the air. Well, I got the black water tank out. So uh, the trailer's ready to be washed. So I'm gonna go in inside and cool, uh, cool off. Huh? I'll get some refreshments and uh, take a break and look online and see what I can find to wash
power wash that frame in off grid setting. Well, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. The fridge is still running strong. I'm afraid the compressor is going to burn out now. It's run for five hours straight without shutting off at all. This worries me. It's putting a serious drain on my uh, power inside and on its compressor, especially in this heat. Hope I don't lose this fridge. It's all I have left. 